Good morning and thank you for joining me, Vicky Higgins, on today for today's reflection, Thursday the 3rd of August. And we continue to look through the, through the book of Acts. Today, focus on Acts chapter 13, verses 42 to chapter 14, verses 7. So we meet Paul and Barnabas, who have already been preaching in Antioch and have had a really successful response to that preaching. There are many more believers and followers, both those who are Jews by birth and those who are Jews by conversion. And a process of teaching, encouraging and nurturing begins. But this is not the only response to the gospel. So I read, as I read through today's passage, listen out for the different reactions the gospel provokes. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. When the congregation was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who talked with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. They began to contradict what Paul was saying and heaped abuse on him. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly. We had to speak the word of God to you first, since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life. We now turn to the Gentiles, for this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honoured the, the word of the Lord and all who were appointed for eternal life believed. The word of the Lord spread through the whole region. But the Jewish leaders incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from the region. So they shook the dust off their feet as a warning to them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went as usual into the Jewish synagogue. There they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up all the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the Lord who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to before perform signs and wonders. The people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews and others with the apostles. There was a plot afoot among both Gentiles and Jews, together with their leaders, to mistreat them and stone them. But they found out about it and fled to Lysanian cities of Lystra and Darba and to the surrounding country where they continued to preach the gospel. This is the word of the Lord. So did you spot the range of responses the gospel provokes? I had in the positive column, an urge, wanting to hear more, gathering to hear, gladness, honouring the word of the Lord, believing. But it was also reference to jealousy, to threats, to rumour spreading, incitement, expulsion, poisoning the minds of others against the apostles. So how do the apostles themselves react to the range of responses in their message? Those who became believers are carefully encouraged and nurtured in their new faith. The apostles are not daunted or deterred by the opposition. It's usually limited to counter arguments but then escalates to physical violence. Paul and Barnabas do recognise a point where they've done all they can and further attempts to preach to a particular group or in a particular place become counterproductive. In Antioch, there's a solemn moment at which they turn towards the community, again establishing scripture as their authority. They recognise for the first time they need to move on physically leaving behind them the young group they've set up of believers. The prophetic action of shaking the dust off their feet echoes the instruction of Jesus to the 70 disciples in Luke chapter 10, verse 10. 
but whenever you enter a town, they do not welcome you. Go out into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. As in the early parts of Acts, the attempts of the gospel, the attempts of the enemies of the gospel to drive out those who preach only results in the message spreading further and the Christian faith growing stronger. We hear how the disciples are filled with joy and the Holy Spirit as they are expelled. There is a note in the, note, in the leader's notes. When we're reflecting on the different responses in the gospel message, modern readers need to pause and take care not to associate the Jews of the book of Acts or the gospel with the Jewish people of today. In the early days of the Christian church, there was clearly much animosity between the two groups and Acts portrays this initiated by the Jews. However, in the years that have followed, it is the Jews who have been persecuted in terrible ways and sometimes scripture has been used to justify this. The persecution of the Jews has been a great evil and is an enormous stain on the history of the Christian church. So we need to take care as we read the book of Acts not to associate the Jewish faith with those who respond in a negative way. We must think always of the message of Jesus to love and to share his love with others and not to use his word or the gospel to do harm. As we read the text today, we're reminded of the progress of the Christian gospel and Christian life in gen general. And we're reminded that it, sharing the gospel is not always easy. We will meet a range of reactions. We will meet difficulties as well as easy situations, sorrow as well as joy. And on several occasions, Paul draws our attention to some of this. The Christian way is sometimes not very comfortable, but whatever the obstacles and difficulties in our own lives, we should ask God the grace to persevere. So to end with a prayer, I bind until myself, I bind unto myself today the power of God to hold and lead, his eye to watch, his might to stay. His ear to hearken to my need, the wisdom of my God to teach. His hand to guide, his shield to ward, the word of God to give me speech, his heavenly host to be my God. Amen. <laughs>